Hey, listen, you know, we've all been there. You know, we get annoyed at the constant sound of drumming fingers or the tapping pens or squeaky chairs, but for some people, those repetitive sounds can literally drive them crazy, sending them into a panic attack. This disorder is called uh, misophonia, and it's starting to get more attention in the medical community. ABC 2 News' Megan Knight has the story of one woman who is tormented by everyday noises. The click of the mouse. The hum of the printer. We hear these noises daily at our jobs and tune them out. But if you have misophonia, a day in the office may sound more like this. Misophonia is defined as the hatred of sound. It's the reality <laughs> Meredith Rosal of Baltimore lives with each and every day. She first noticed something was off around the age of six when she couldn't tolerate the sound of her parents chewing at the dinner table. My mom thought it was behavior. She thought I was, you know, being difficult, but then she realized something was going on. A specialist diagnosed Rosal with misophonia. Sounds or triggers can cause nervousness and anxiety. Rosal has several triggers which can bring on these feelings. Slurping, gum chewing, gum popping, keyboard typing. Misophonia is a strong anger response. It's a flight or fight response. So you get an anxiety level that goes up. You can start to sweat. Your blood pressure, your pulse goes up. It's almost the beginnings of a panic or anxiety attack that comes on in response to one of these noises. Dr. Brian Kaplan is chairman of Ear, Nose, and Throat Services at GBMC. He says while we all have sounds that get under our skin, misophonia takes it to the extreme. It's different than just having an annoyance. These are often life-altering responses, and they have to avoid these situations. A library is often thought of as being a fairly quiet place to work or study, but Rosal found it to be the noisiest place at Towson University when she went to school here. We took her back there and had her sit next to the computer clusters where only a handful of people were working on this day. It didn't take long for the sound of clicking keyboards to make Rosal feel uneasy. I feel anxious. My heart's racing a little bit. Um, if you were to give me a task to focus on a study, I wouldn't be able to concentrate. What do you want to do right now? Like, what is your body telling you? I want to walk out of here. <laughs> Often avoidance is the only solution for people with misophonia because there are no treatments. When leaving isn't an option, Rosal resorts to her noise-canceling headphones. I may just pop one in when I'm in public if I have to and put my hair down so no one even notices I have it in. Doctors don't know for sure what causes misophonia. Audiologists say oftentimes patients will come to them thinking it's a problem with their ears, but the root of the issue most likely lies within the brain. It's not how you're picking up the sound, it's what your brain is doing as it processes the sound. Rosal refuses to let misophonia ruin her life. She started a meetup group last year to connect with others in the area who live with the same disorder. She also moved in with her boyfriend and his dog, a decision she admits to being apprehensive about at first, but is now glad she did. People you live with are usually the ones that you develop triggers to the quickest, and but he doesn't do anything that bothers me, and he's really understanding, so it's going great. There's a lot of research going on in the neuroscience field right now about misophonia. They're focused on how this disorder might be connected to other things like depression or OCD. Experts say this will help doctors determine the best treatment options and give those who have misophonia more peace of mind and hearing. Megan Knight, ABC2 News.